Today I have this 2U server from Acellus. It's an educational server, and don't worry, it's 64-bit, so we're all set. This is gonna be really powerful. You can tell it's gonna be powerful by the fact that it's using, it's clearly using a consumer motherboard with audio jacks. So you know this is gonna be really powerful, and I'm sure whoever bought this originally, it was really worth the money for the hardware at least. The software I'm sure is fine. From what I can tell, it's basically like a system used for like grading and issuing tests. But, uh, you know, we're not here for the software. Uh, this thing has clearly a consumer motherboard in it. Like I said, it's got like a nice little red power button. Uh, it's a 2U unit, like I said, mine came kind of beat up. I've taken out most of the screws, so it's kind of looking a little flimsy. But, uh, you know, it's like a solid aluminum construction when it's together. They use stupid one-way screws in its construction, which is a little annoying. On the back, it simply has a power supply. You can tell it's pretty old. It's not an auto-switching one. You know, filming these things, I've noticed that one studio light just ain't cutting it. It's way too dark on this side. So I did order a couple more lights, and I ordered some nice batteries and whatnot to power said lights so i should be able to light these things more efficiently but i need to get this video shot so this motherboard is very colorful i am pretty glad i skipped this era of pc building when it was like the early 2000s and all the boards were rainbow colored it looks like something you'd 3d print this motherboard's made by jetway it's a pa 78 vm it has a single 16x PCI Express slot, two regular PCI slots, and some uh, 3 gigabit SATA. It supports AMD chips. When I was doing research on this board, I found a different version that had a DVI port. This particular one has HDMI, so I figured it might be a slightly newer model. It said that it had an AMD Sempron CPU, and I thought, oh, well. AMD is pretty rare in the server market. It uses standard DDR2-800, it's a PC2-6400 standard. And uh, yeah, it came with one gig running in single channel mode, of course, since there's only one stick, which is a little odd. It came with a consumer 250 gig Western Digital Drive. As far as I can tell, it's got a GUI of some type based on the files, but we'll see if it actually starts up. It's an older power supply. Uh, you can tell that it's pretty old by the fact that it's 90% Molex connectors. Uh, the with noise killer thing means that this is uh, Sparkle Power. I'm pretty sure they're the only ones who use that. But uh, it may be ugly, but Sparkle Power does make really high quality power supplies. Although I wouldn't necessarily want to use this one. It's pretty old. This particular unit uses a single core AMD Athlon 64 it's the 1640 LE, or LE 1640. It's a 2.4 gigahertz, but like I said, it's only a single core, so it's pretty dated by today's standards. And it is actually 64-bit, so they weren't lying, but it's not exactly powerful. Even though this motherboard is fairly old, it's actually not terrible if you want a test bench, simply because it has pretty much every kind of port and slot you can possibly use on a modern system. We've got uh, parallel ATA, serial ATA, PCI Express, standard PCI, COM ports, all that good stuff. It still has an, uh, an HDMI port so you can just hook it up to a monitor and you know it'll work and you can always swap out the CPU. I think it does support dual core chips especially if you had to do a whole bunch of hard drive wiping using D-Band you could just hook this thing up and you'd have pretty much every interface you could possibly need to uh, wipe basically every drive you could come across. Uh, it's just missing USB 3 for uh, faster external drives. Socket is so weird. Man, <laughs> I, don't, I don't miss this kind of stuff, that's for sure. Uh, no output on HDMI and no output on VGA. So, and I'm not getting any beeps, although I don't know if this thing has a beeper. I don't think it does. So, I don't know, maybe the board's dead. Okay, I could not get that thing to boot at all. So, let's try it on my actual test bench. Originally for my home theater PC until I realized that I ordered an ATX board and I needed a micro ATX board. <laughs> so, this particular system is now my test bench. 
And uh, yeah, I just have the hard drive hooked up so it's detected. And I just wanna make sure that it actually tries to boot off it and let's see what happens. Uh, it should it should run regardless of the CPU installed. All right, I give up. It just finds some errors on the disk and reboots and I don't have enough interest to sit around and try and repair them. Originally, this video was gonna be a teardown of this Baumgar remote management thing. Uh, from what I can tell, this is for uh, remotely logging into uh, people's machines like t uh, using like TeamViewer style programs or remote desktop and this is like the access server for it apparently this company is like really evil they burn like the domain name of your company into the the boot drive so that you can't even change the domain name of your your what um your company without contacting them so yeah real evil and i i bought it because um it was supposed to come with an intel xeon and uh, like a modern one, like a V5. And uh, that's what it was sold at. So I got it and it wasn't, it's an older uh, DDR2 board. And I was actually gonna return it because it wasn't what it said. I didn't pay too much for it, but it wasn't what it was described as. And I ended up being really busy and I didn't return it. I got it and it ended up being exactly the same as the Nitro Security Nitro View, the uh, 1225 that I did a teardown of a while ago and it's the exact same motherboard. <laughs> so, oh well, I mean, that wouldn't have made it a very interesting video. It's a E8400 Core 2 Duo, and it's the same uh, Supermicro uh, X7 SBI motherboard with the uh, CPU on a 45 degree angle, so you can't use a normal heatsink on it. You have to use the stupid low profile one or presumably a fan cooled one that Supermicro sells. Cause this copper actually has squares cut out of it to uh, accommodate the, all the power delivery stuff around the CPU. They didn't actually keep out of where you're supposed to keep out for, for the socket. So you have to use these custom copper coolers. So unfortunately this one wasn't worth doing a proper teardown on since it pretty much already exists on my channel.